All right, I want to do a quick update on this idea of a millennial reign. First of all, let me read BRL's comment. She says, hi, Jay, this is called dispensationalism. It's basically a way of interpreting the Holy Scriptures. It's not the truth of how God would have us to live. It's very bad and contradicts numerous scriptures. It teaches us, the body of Christ, Christians, the church, versus them, the Jews, those living in the state of Israel. All right, so, yeah, it's, so the, it's dispensationalism. It's, you know, it's the same thing that the Muslims do. It's the same thing that the Mormons do. The Muslims claim that Muhammad had to come and set God's people right because what Jesus did wasn't enough and that uh, Muhammad had to come and tell us the truth of of everything all right so I mean that's what they tell you right so the truth doesn't come by Jesus Christ it comes by Muhammad now when I first became a believer I studied uh, the Quran uh, and the Bible at the same time just because I wanted to make sure the Bible was right I had to have something to compare the truth with it it's just what I did. I, you know, right or wrong, that's how I, I did it. It was, you know, in 2001, 2002, uh, you know, I was seeing on the news, I was watching too much news to begin with, but I was seeing a lot on the news about how Muslims believed in Jesus too. Well, they don't. They don't believe in Jesus at all. Just because they claim they do doesn't mean that they do. Uh, let, you know, let me see if I can find a verse here. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Muhammad. I, no, no, that's not what it says. Grace and truth came by Jesus Christ, not by Muhammad at all right so um, <laughs> look you can apply this to Mormonism Mormonism does the same thing they'll say well the Bible was true but it wore out and now we need a new prophet of God to tell us to set us right and the theory or the philosophy or whatever is that um, you know like Abraham came along and set everybody right Moses came along and set everybody right they were going off course and then you know ultimately Jesus came along and set everybody right now we need a new prophet and it the new prophet is a 20 year old pervert named Joseph Smith all right so they're putting all their faith trust and hope in a 20 year old pervert who slept with lots of women including children now they're putting all their confidence in God in this 20 year old pervert so that's what dispensationalism is right what I'm saying is I no, I don't believe in none of that stuff that's not supported by the Bible at all it's always there look it's always been about faith Number one, that's never changed, right? Hebrews 11, verse 7 <clears throat> is the clearest example, in my opinion. At least one of the clearest examples that it's always been about faith. By faith, Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith all right so the difference if you will between the Old Testament and the New Testament is everything in the Old Testament is leading up to the sacrifice 
of Jesus Christ. And in the New Testament tells the story of Jesus laying down his life to cover our sins. So, I mean, I'm, I don't know if I can simplify it, but obviously the Old Testament gives us a, a historical account from the beginning of creation up to uh, before baby Jesus was born. And therein is the law where Moses uh, gave us the law that we ought to live by. And the law reveals what sin is. And the law is there to be our schoolmaster to lead us to faith in Christ. Now, in the New Testament, here comes Christ. All right, here comes Jesus. And he shows us the way. He lives the the example that we are to follow and if we follow him we see that as he passed from death to life so also will we pass from death to life all right and now in the new testament the people of god is not one group of people but available to all people throughout the whole entire world so there are differences in uh, between the Old Testament and the New Testament but it's always been about faith that's never changed all right so this idea of dispensationalism as if the truth was what worn out I mean tell me that I'm wrong that's what the Muslims say and that's what the Mormons say that the truth wore out and so there needed to be a new dispensation, if you will, or a new prophet of God. And I'm saying, no, the truth endures forever. The truth is always the truth. It, you, it never changes. It, it's not subjective. Um, the, the truth is, uh, you know, static. It does not change. Man's thoughts and opinions and all that sort of stuff might vary, but not the truth. The truth is the truth. It always remains the truth, regardless of what any man says or thinks. All right, so in regards to the millennial reign, this would be another dispensation, and that's why I say this is like another religion without a name. It's not supported by the Bible at all. The millennial reign is not found anywhere in the Bible. And in case this is the first time you've seen me talk about this, let's go to two verses that prove this. In verse 4 it says, They lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. So it's not Jesus reigning a thousand years. It's those of us that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. We reign with him. And we're living and reigning with him right now. So also in verse 6. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. So I want to make this point again that if Jesus does not reign in your life right now, how can you rightly say that you are saved? Think about it. Now, we are priests of God and of Christ right now. And... You basically, I wonder if people even read their Bible. Like 1 Peter 2, verse 9. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. You are a royal priesthood and holy nation. In fact, Jesus tells us, commands us, to go and preach the gospel to every creature. We are preachers we are priests of God we are a royal priesthood and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for witness unto all nations and then shall the end come so this is very important that we preach the gospel to every creature I think the gospel of to every creature that particular 
uh, phrase, if you will. Here, let me find it. Let's go. Let's do it this way. I believe it's in. There it is. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. All right, and so we are priests of God and of Christ, and of course we can go to, uh, let's see, what is that, what's that say there in verse 6? They shall be priests of God and of Christ. All right, so you hear, oops, yeah, no, that's all right. So, well, let me say th this, okay, so you hear... People say, um, you know, reign and rule a thousand years. Jesus will reign and rule a thousand years. Except the, that word rule is not in Revelation 20. Uh, it's Jesus, <laughs> whether you want to look at it as reign or rule. Um, oh, no, 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 no. What a... I, I want to find that verse in Isaiah. It's probably, the Lord shall send a rod of strength. Okay. All right. All right. So, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. Okay. Um, and she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. All right. And so, I mean, of course, this is talking about Jesus. All right. But this idea that. Uh, he's gonna, you know, I don't know if I can explain it, but the idea is that Jesus comes down from heaven on earth and rules the nations, and that would include unsaved people. So, when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, they say, that it is not the end of the world making Jesus a liar and so the idea is that the saved people are going to be changed into their incorruptible bodies and we will be ruling with Christ pointing our fingers at the zombies those that are not saved those that are that have not been changed in the twinkling of an eye. Alright, so the problem becomes when you carry this thought out and you say, well, alright, this is gonna be for a thousand years, and then <clears throat> and then I guess there's a judgment, even though there already was a judgment, whatever. The judgment is are you saved or not saved? And the judgment occurs when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. Alright, so there's a second judgment and apparently the first judgment wasn't good enough because the unsaved people are still living that God couldn't destroy them or something I'm not sure I can't I can't explain it because it's it's not a very good thought but from what I understand the idea is that you know after the end of the thousand years there's another judgment and uh, it's the unsaved I don't know if they're even if it even matters anymore if it didn't matter when Jesus came in the clouds of heaven I don't know why it would matter at the end of the thousand years I really don't but uh, apparently a, another judgment and then somehow Jesus is on earth and then he comes in the clouds of heaven again on a white throne and he judges I don't know what he's judging the second time that he couldn't judge the first time so I don't know if you got two Jesuses or, you know, what's going on there. And then the thing about it is now at the end of the thousand years, Jesus no longer reigns. So now I guess it's up to you to reign or somebody. Maybe it's this guy here, Kent Christmas. Maybe he comes, maybe he's the one that comes down from heaven in his sleigh with his reindeer and he's going to be God of all. Right? Jesus is done reigning. 
Right, I mean, he reigns a thousand years. You guys, that's what you're saying. He reigns a thousand years. Well, if he reigns a thousand years, at the end of the thousand years, he's not reigning anymore, according to your little religion there. And I'm telling you, these guys are not putting any thought into this at all. And they're completely ignoring what the scripture says. It's unbelievable. Now, I'm not kidding you here. It's just delusional. Nonsensical. And you ever get a chance to pin one of these guys down? Try to get them to think through what they're teaching. Alright, where am I at here? Oh, I don't know. I don't know what I'm looking for here. Is it 65? I can't remember. This is why this is why I gotta Man, this is why I gotta read the Bible more. Really? I have no idea what the Bible says. There it is. No, I had it right the first time. 66. Verse 4. I also will choose their delusions and will bring their fears upon them because when I called, none did answer. When I spake, they did not hear, but they did evil before mine eyes and chose that in which I delighted not. I will choose their delusions. And this is what happens when you do not regard the word of God. Right? When I spake, they did not hear. When I spake, they did not hear. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. You don't want to hear that. You want to hear Jesus reigns for a thousand years. Because if you hear that, then ha ha! When Jesus is done reigning, I can take over, right? At the end of the thousand years, I'll be the boss. Yeah, I'm tired of him being the boss. I want to be the boss. So after the end of the thousand years, you get to be the boss. Ha <laughs> ha! Isn't that what you're saying? There's no way to get around that. Just think about what you're saying, buddy. And look, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him. It's not saying Jesus reigns. It's saying we reign with him during this thousand years, which is right now. It's a unique time period. It's from the time of baby Jesus to the time of his return. And when the Spirit of God comes upon all of us that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, all of us that are born of God. This is a unique time period because it's available for everybody anywhere in the world for whosoever believeth in me shall never perish, right? So this is a, this is a unique time period. It's not going to be like this forever because when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, it is, it is the end of the world. And this it was not like this before baby Jesus was born. This is a unique time period. That's why it's called a thousand years. During this thousand years, and then of course, I, you know, people just don't want to read. They don't want to believe what they read. They spend so much time translating words into Arabic and Chinese and Mexican and Hebrew and Greek and and whatever language, trying to figure something out, thinking that they're going to have special inside knowledge, secret knowledge. But in reality, the secret to understanding is faith man I'm telling you it's always been about faith believing the Bible that you hold in your hands is from God faith in the Word of God that's the key to understanding not retranslating words into various languages and trying to come up with a word that fits what you want it to fit and that's what a lot of people do I'm not kidding you a lot. Of, I mean, if you don't have any faith in what you're reading, of course you want to retranslate that word and, and twist it around until it says something you want it to say. That's what they do. But when God says what God says, and you don't believe what God says, then he will choose your delusion. And that's what we have here with Revelation 20, 
when people say Jesus Christ reigns a thousand years it's another dispensation it's another period of time and what they're looking for what they won't tell you what they won't be honest about is that when Jesus is done reigning they're going to be taken over it's going to be a mad fight to see who gets on top of the mountain and takes over the world and really just be honest about it that's what you believe Robbie Blankenship's another one of you teaching a whole nother religion that is separate from what the Bible teaches all right and and so again um, just in case you've never read the Bible in your entire life and you're wondering about Jesus does he reign for a thousand years and we can completely dispel that notion with one single verse Luke 1 verse 33 and he speaking of Jesus shall reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there is no end or there shall be no end right so when he he's reigning right now he's not when he comes he's still reigning at the end of the thousand years he's still reigning there's no thousand year reign of Christ he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever Revelation 20 they lived and reigned we live and reign with Christ during this time right now but when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven we are changed in the twinkling of an eye everything is made new right in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed again Matthew 24 Let's find that word trump. Let's see, right there. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect. Right? And then, of course, uh, when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. These are the same, very same thing. With the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then those of us which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. All right. And um, let's just do it this way, and then we'll go to. Revelation 20 verse 11 and I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it from whose face the earth and heaven fled away and there was found no place for them that's when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven and of course Revelation 1 behold he oops is it still there oh, Mandela had me worried Revelation 1 verse 7 behold he cometh with clouds and every eye shall see him and they also which pierced him and all kindred of the earth shall wail because of him even so amen and of course I mean this all parallels what we're reading with in you know Matthew 24 Mark 13 Luke 21 it's all saying the same thing I don't know how you're missing it man I, I don't know how anybody misses it and I all these experts that are preaching this stuff I just wonder hey, he's got the nicest shirt you'll ever see and slick hairdo but does he ever read the Bible you know what I'm saying how, how do you not know this stuff it, it's mind-boggling really and again right there the Sun shall be Darken the moon shall not give her light and stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken whose face the earth and heaven fled away and there was found no place for them and I'm telling you when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven he 
he's going to make everything new. And he sat upon the throne and said, Behold, I make all things new. He makes all things new. And this is what happens when he comes in the clouds of heaven. And then it's judgment. And then it's judgment. Okay, so let's go back here to Revelation 20. Let's go over here. And again, anybody ever read the Bible? You know about the parable of the wheat and the tares? Right? So the wheat and the tares are growing together. And they said, let them grow until a harvest, and then come harvest, we'll separate them. That's exactly what is going on here. Exactly what's going on in Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21. Same thing. It's all throughout the Bible. You know, we read that in 1 Thessalonians, and where was that? What was that other one? Uh, oh, what's the verse I'm thinking of? 1 Corinthians 15. I, this is this is all the same thing. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trump shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. This is the separation of the wheat and the tare. All right, and then 1 Thessalonians 4, same thing. Uh, very same thing. right here and for the Lord himself shall descend from the heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and dead in Christ shall be raised first this is the separation of the wheat and the tares this is the judgment of God are you saved or are you not saved there is no other judgment are you saved or are you not saved that's that's it there's no well, let's see, you sin 37 times, and you're going to be judged 37 times, or you judged 49 times, or 5,622 times, so i got to judge you 5,622 times. No, that's not, that's not it. It's one simple judgment. Are you saved or are you not saved? If you're judged for one single sin, buddy, you got the death penalty. You're doomed. And scripture has concluded all under sin. There's no other judgment. If the judgment is, are you a sinner or not, then it, the scripture has concluded us all under sin. And, well, it's not, you know, if it's one sin, if it's a thousand sin, does it really matter? You get a thousand life sentences. Oh, that's brilliant. Right. Well, blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. And how is that possible? But to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, who covers our sin, whose blood washes away all of our sin. I mean, you talk about the judgment, that's it. Are you saved or are you not saved? There is no other judgment. Right, so again, you get back to, I don't know if I, did I cover that in First Thessalonians 4? So, the dead in Christ shall rise first, and then those of us which are alive and remain. This is the separating the wheat from the tare. This is the judgment of God. The wrath of God is poured upon them that are not saved. They don't have a second chance at the end of the world. When it's the end of the world, it's the end of the world. Let's, you know, I mean, unless you want to call Jesus a liar, and if that's what you believe, you believe Jesus is a liar, just be honest about it. But Jesus is asked, what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And he tells us, and the end of the world is when he comes in the clouds of heaven. Are you so ignorant you don't understand that? And then he gives a parable. And he talks more and more about this stuff. But the, make no mistake about it, the end of the world is when he comes in the clouds of heaven. To suggest that is not the end of the world, I mean, is just blatantly. What shall be the sign of thy coming? and of the end of the world. When he comes 
it's the end of the world. And there are no more second chances for unsaved people. The only chance unsaved people have is today, right now. If they put it off another day, there's no guarantee that they'll have any chance. And so today is very critical. Today is very important that they be told the gospel. And the gospel is very simple, to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And you think about, you know, the most famous verse in the world, John 3, verse 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And you hear about these people. And I, lo I love this verse right here. What are the works of God that we might do? All right, you want to be uh, somebody that uh, is a servant of God, somebody that... Uh, does the works of God, you know, just like these guys, they ask that question, that very question. What shall we do that we might work the works of God? Right? That's a great question. What might we do that we do the works of, that we might work the works of God? Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that ye believe on him whom he has sent. Believe. Uh, it's not about what you do. It's about what was done for you. And do you believe it? It's about faith. Man, it's always been about faith. And of course, uh, it, it's amazing to me how many people preach against the gospel of Christ. And they, don't, they do not realize that there's... This question that is specifically asked in the Bible, what must I do to be saved? Right there it is, Acts 16. That exact question, what must I do to be saved, is in the Bible. And the answer is, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. All right, so if we go to Ephesians 2, start here at verse 8. For by grace are you saved through faith. It's always been about faith, man. It's always been about faith. And that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So what do you think you're a good person? You think mm, you're doing you're doing a lot of good, you know. You're walking around society with your head up and got the nice clothes on and you're doing wonderful things for people in the community. That's great. That's not a sin, but it's not gonna save you. The only chance you got is if you have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the only chance. The only chance is if you believe what he did is going to save you as opposed to believing what you're doing might save you. So I'm telling you, what you do, what you are doing is nothing compared to what was done for you. Nothing at all. We are all as an unclean thing and all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. And you know what the filthy rags are, right? It took me a while to learn. It. But it's not a man thing, I'll tell you that. Alright, so uh, you know uh, well I think that's good enough. That's good enough right there. It's wasted enough time. But I just want to go over and just sort of take a general overview of what's going on here. It's day after day. Video after video. People are teaching another religion. And they might as well just come out and say, Jesus Christ reigns a thousand years and then he's done. He's finished. And he's not reigning right now. Jesus isn't reigning right now. 
He's going to rain after he comes, and it's only going to be for a short time. And then what? He's going to stop raining. I'm just be honest about what you believe, man. Are you the next in line to take over? Is that what you're... I mean, just be honest about what you believe. Meanwhile, I'm going to keep at it. And I'm going to keep pointing out to one simple chapter. Do you believe what the Bible says? Or are you going to believe what these guys say? Because they are in contradiction with one another. All right, this is important. This is very important stuff. Right? Because if you don't believe the Bible you hold in your hands, if you don't believe the very Word of God, you're going to believe in something. And that something ain't going to be right.